The exhibition is called Red Lines and the first piece you see when you come up the stairs is also called Red Lines and it's the word red and a bunch of red lines. So it's a big intro to the piece, it's sort of a visual version of the title. They refer to the red lines in this Jolie screen process that I'm using for the photographs in the exhibition as well as then referring to these red lines of decision making and politics. So what I've tried to do is bring in history and politics into the project in a wider context because the photographs are in a, an out-of-date historical process that hasn't been used in over 100 years. And then in the gallery, there's the windows are covered in red, green and blue stripes, which is like a larger, opaque version of what the process is about. Like here, they've got these three big windows. We needed to cover them to create more darkness for the photographs, so this was a really good way of making very colourful blinds, for one thing, I suppose. But they're also paper, they're photographic paper. And I've actually always had a really big problem with photography. I've really found it not complex enough. I need things to be really complex and dense to satisfy my need as an artist. And then that's not just a secret code behind everything, but I try and share that research. It's about creating counterfactual kind of histories. And these are using facts to create a fiction that kind of relate to history. So with these photographs, the role of flowers. For the project I was working with amateur flower rangers from Des Moines Flower Club. I've always had some kind of collaborative participatory element in the things that I do. The titles are all kind of a little bit playful as well because it references the artist, the date and then an historical event that's socio-economically kind of relevant. And there's three different sets of images and then one on the mantelpiece and they kind of traverse this 500 year sort of time period. Part of the idea behind this particular show is that it's to use this old process that has been abandoned for 100 years and it's to give a visual history of images that it's never had. In a rather cheeky way, I'm kind of then going back longer than the history of photography, tracking through the different centuries, looking at the different arrangements and the styles. There's two parts to each picture in that there's a black and white sheet film and then there's a colour screen in front of it. So the result of that is that you've got a, a gap which then when you're looking at it, it changes colour because the lines are shifting. It has a very, very particular physical interactive um, element which is, makes it very unusual for photographs. And then they're displayed as these very small little open-ended light boxes that are kind of sculptural. And I was interested in not conforming to the photographic light box kind of technique and also not enlarging them. So what you're seeing is the actual film that was in the camera, but it's totally analogue. And then there's this digitally generated screen really interested in trying to figure out a way of making them a little bit more contemporary and I'm kind of more interested in assigning multiple narratives to these images which are just flowers but nothing is just a flower you know everything has comes with a huge amount of baggage and I'm kind of always interested in trying to cross connect you know mess up and complicate things that are maybe seen as kind of quite simple. Mm -hmm.